a new Star Trek The Ablaze 0.97a just came out, which is kinda unlucky, as I recently started playing 0.96a update, wanted to review it, but lo and behold, enough has changed that this is not a continuation of 0.96a, but a new whole patch. Before we get to most recent bofu kicksing, we will go down and start from the very beginning. You can basically take this as a continuation. 0.96a. Already, changes to hostile activity. Now, colony crises. No more penalties, just risk reward opportunities. Colony stability is back to 5, and spaceport and megaport accessibility back to 50 and 80. Now we have very interesting new abilities. Reverse polarity will enable you to change the direction of a slipstream. This will be a great change. Now, generate slip surge. Creates a slipstream away from nearby gravity well. We will have to see how this will look. No, we don't have to wonder. Look at this. Look at it. Look at the speed. And we cannot forget new unique colony related crises for every major faction. Ability slots added, so you can swap between them. Now I presume new tab will be added to the map. You should be able to talk with Starscape in sector map to show slip streams. No, what I was about to say about Starscape is wrong. It's already being shown. Were these changes already in? This is apparently how the slip streams look like on the map. Very helpful on Starscape. Actually very helpful because later in this patch you will see some buffs to the slip streams as well. AI will be better at using emergency burn. New area at the bottom left corner will be added. Let's call it better. This zone will be just more than a label, with also new handmade star system. I'm actually super excited for the abyss because I haven't seen it yet and you are kinda hyping me up. I'm looking for the spooky stuff. More points for hyperspace talk opera. More points for hyperspace talk <laughs> More points for hyperspace topography. I got it. Now you should scan magnetic fields. As mods will be counted for auto resolve. I don't know how much it will make a difference, but could be pretty interesting. You will lose less story points when creating second stable location in a system. Very big one, although small one, is coming up. Take all bottom will no longer take over capacity fuel. Oh, this would save so much time. Bunch of other changes. Another small big change. Again to fuel, increase the amount of fuel available to purchase at the colonies by 50%. And now a weird change. The officers you find in the sleeper pods, the 7 level and the 5 level one. We'll now have a preset skill selection. I don't know if I like it. So you maybe don't get the super OP ones that often with so many elite skills? I think in this case randomness is more fun. But who knows? This one could be huge. Black market trade can now fill the demand. Now let's test this out. Now they have a deficit of 1,500 units. We will sell everything to them. And they still have deficit. Of course, although they still have deficit, we won't be able to sell it at high prices anymore. So it is not that big of a change as it seems. The demand is now filled. But I don't think it was because of us. I think it is because the situation calmed down on the planet. Next, increase out of combat hull repair speed for ships larger than frigates. Very nice. Arms dealers will have improved inventory volume. And very nice change to one of the missions that was really annoying from the Galasha Academy. There was a mission where you had to find a probe in a system. This was super hard to find. Now it's easier. Also, it cannot be put into the nebula because that was a pain in the ass. Derelict Mothership now always drops one of Prestine Nanoforge, Synchrotron, I don't know, or Catholic Core. FYI, the most important item in the game. And now, for me, at least one of the more exciting changes. And these are the changes to the skill tree. But first, let's talk about ECM rating. Of course, there you see the enemy weapon range. Both sides can have the penalty at the same time. Penalty will be capped at 10%. And after this being capped, the penalty is reduced by the ratio of enemy and player ECM ratings. Basically, if both sides have the same ECM rating, each side's penalty is reduced by 50%. To be honest, I'm reading word by word. Because I'm not really sure how this will affect us. I'm not sure about the ECM rating now because here, ECM rating. I have better ECM rating, therefore the enemy range is lower. And when you will capture the points, <laughs> the ECM rating will change. But as the enemy took two points, they get the advantage. And now we as we are winning by the ECM rating, the enemy weapon range will be minus two. So as I understand it now, everybody will have the penalty? And you will just reduce it? Basically, it will be different. What can I say? I don't know. We will see. Now for the skills. Electronic warfare changes. New cool addition to the skill. You will take the combat objectives, as you have seen uh, right before this, much more quickly and from a longer range. And if this change will be big, this will be a great skill. And this is why I love skill changes. Especially those that happen to the skills I don't use that much. Cybernetic augmentation is next. Now it will be a top tier skill. Replacing the neural link. And oh, even though it is moving up, it will still get somewhat nerfed. It will only increase the elite skills for officers by one, and it was two, and that's a 
big difference. But do not dumpster the scope that much. Now it will increase the damage dealt and reduces the damage taken by all ships used by the officers. 1% per elite skill the player has. This could be pretty big. And the damage bonus is doubled for the flagship. Even nicer. Now the neural link. And I must say, I was super excited the first time it came into the game. But at the end, I didn't find it as appealing as I hoped. And I think the others felt the same way as they moved it down a tier. With changes to the home mod it adds, with reduced order and point cost, but in exchange, it will increase the ship's deployment points and supply cost by 20% instead. I think this is a good change. And now, when it will be put down a tier, maybe it will be even more usable. As in this playthrough, I didn't even bother. Now, with a bunch of changes to the combat line, starting with Ballistic Mastery. 5% more damage by ballistic weapons added to the elite effect target analysis damage to the strides will be moved down to the elite skill and also with added five percent extra damage to frigate system expertise change to elite effect to minus ten percent damage taken does it mean everything else will get removed missile specializ missile specialization <laughs> <laughs> Missile specialization. Nerfs. Reduced fire rate from 50 to 25. Specialization. <laughs> By the way, my girlfriend is an English teacher. Take that into perspective. <laughs> Reduced bonus missile hit points from 50% to 25. But at least added elite effect plus 25 missile ammo regeneration rate. I think with the hurricane missile changes. Alex really doesn't like the missiles. Yeah, and some people agree. I'm basically just joking. If they want to nerf the missiles, if they feel it will make a better game, they should do it. Buff to helmsmanship from 10 to 15 top speed. And the elite skill will also get double buffed from 5 to 10. And percentage wise, this is a huge buff. Now buffs also to combat endurance. No longer the repairs will be faster, only be below 50%. Now it will be moved to 100%. Next, field modulation. Like, look, we are buffing all the red skills. Maybe besides the top two ones increased hard flux dissipation while shields are active to 20% was 15 and also added to the elite skill minus 25% overload duration damage control the elite part will be replaced repairs of damage but functional weapons and engines can continue while they are under fire pretty nice finally we are moving from combat line to the industry line to Ordnance expertise. Reduce the base skills to 1.5 flux dissipation per ordnance points was 2. Yeah, this was one of my favorites. Still probably must have. Hull restoration. Never used this mod before because I don't lose the ships usually. Faster repair of D mods and other changes. Interesting addition is 15% maximum combat readiness. This could be a pretty cool change. But I still think they should make changes to the industry line, especially to the top skills as I never use them. But maybe that is because I despise demons on my ships. I'm just a player that cannot handle the orange bar here. As soon as I get the opportunity, I will get rid of these. Trash. But pretty helpful if you are doing some challenge runs, maybe. Now let's move to the leadership line. Board doctrine changes. Ordinance expertise to skills gained by unofficered ships. What does it do? I have no idea. This is such a mouthful. What does it do? Now a nerf to containment procedures. The fuel use reduction will be changed to 25% was 50. Pretty big. But at least the maximum total was unchanged so for the bigger fleets it will be still as effective and now quick personal opinion the combat line changes are huge and they will buff so many things and now it will be even more beneficial to go for it and i think it will be overpowered with the changes to the cybernetic augmentation skill as now all the other ships will gain more damage and damage reduction based on how many elite skills you will have and now as you can see all the combat line has an elite effect. Now combine this with this skill would be pretty crazy. And now for miscellaneous with just few changes. Here for me is the interesting the last part. With more improvements to AI as the biggest ship used to be deployed by them last. Now it won't longer be the case. Now improvements to ship AI. Torpedoes will be fired at frigates less often. Improvements to the AI accuracy when taking manual control. No longer the AI will turn off its shields when given retreat order. The personality will now maintain missile range. Same as the cautious and timid personality. And of course there are some things I'm not going through, so read through them. For example, there are still some interesting ship AI changes. Now ships, pretty small amount of changes. Bro and Centurion have increased ordnance points by two. And we have a new Grendel class face cruiser. It will be low tech one with some built-in home mods. And Griffin, the Auto Forge has now two uses. And it is also more likely to use missile Auto Forge. By the way, this is Griffin. And the missile Auto Forge is its special ability. And also the Auto Forge will use less flux. Finally, some buff to the missile ship. <laughs> 
whole mods. Escort package, it's back. It will provide 25% maneuverability, 10% top speed, and 20% weapon range within 1,000 star units of larger ships. And also other benefits. This mod could be really nice. Safety overrides will no longer be compatible with flung shunt. And we will have some buffs to auxiliary thrusters. It will cost significantly less. And when you embed it as S mod, it will also increase your speed when you are at zero flux. Very nice for immobile ships. Now let's look at weapons. The new Dragonfire missile will have increased activation range by 100 units. Oh, that's so satisfying. And even though it's my first time using this thing against the ship, I already can say it is a pretty good buff. Because of the point defense systems, it won't be so likely to get shut down. Light dual cannon is getting nerfed, it was buffed to 30, now it's back to 40 flux per shot. Heavy auto cannon will have reduced flux per shot to 90 by 10% increase, very nice. And now we have a big one in my opinion. Phase lands reduce flux damage to 0.8 from 1.2. This is a significant buff. This will make it very usable and any buff to mid energy weapons is super nice thing. As I always thought they were underpowered whoa volatile particle driver increase range to 1000 from 700 while reduced flux per shot to 100 was 150 it said it had 700 range to 1000, but now it has 800, so maybe a small miscalculation here. And I mean, with a thousand range and positive flux per damage, this thing could be insane after the buff. Since you will receive this weapon later in the game, this might be a very nice reward. Hephaestus Assault Gun gets also another buff, because last part it got buffed and now it's getting buffed again. Now flux per damage will be positive, as flux per shot will be 110 from 120. Oh, Storm Needler. Apparently, I should be looking forward to this buff. Now it will use regenerating ammo, max ammo 60 reload size, 30 and 10 ammo per second. It will have improved accuracy and double the fire rate. Burst DPS will be similar to free heavy needlers. That's a lot of damage. Can't wait to try it out. Squall a big nerf, reduces hit points from 300 to 150. Locust a thermal launcher, reduces burst size from 30, was 40 previously. Geysers will be changed as well. And here are the changes. Basically, the order and points to use them will be reduced, but they will fire much slower. Salamander MRM reduced OP cost 3, and the pot was also increased from 10 to 6. That's a big buff for me because I really enjoy this missile. It's not strong, it's, it's actually really weak, but infinite ammo. Somehow it makes this missile feel really nice. Buffs are really significant. And the proximity charger launcher will fire more slowly to 2 seconds from 1. Now a bunch of modding changes, but probably not interesting for you, only for a few people. And now bug fixing. Sometimes a small fleet will pursue, but they won't engage and, and it makes this awkward dance. Now it won't happen, they will probably engage. Really nice improvements to the game. This is the famous number chain from 0.96a to 97. As I mentioned previously, it will be even better to explore the sector, as sleep streams now will reduce the fuel use by 75% instead of 50. And if you now will use the abilities, this could become really useful. And now read through this with me. An epic change, one of the most epic ones I have read, added the ability to add a gate to one star system of your choice. Another ability to deploy limited number of wormholes and more improvements to AI behavior around black holes and so on. Personally, when selling AI cores, now you will get 150% reputation and 150% credit. I will be still selling those to trade take on, but a pretty nice buff. Now for weapons, we have a thumper buff. It will use even less flux. And I already used this thing, so pretty nice buff. But now for your favorite recycle and reaper launcher. Yeah, the hurricane won't be the only sad one here. I'm reduced from 20 to 14 and fire delay from 10 to 15. This is a significant nerf, but at least the hammer barrage will get buffed as now it costs 20 or points and in the future it will go 16 and of course more changes we won't go through them right now february the second patch another interesting change being locked out of factions market now only happens when fighting that factions fleet nearby previously it would also happen to fleets of that factions allies does it mean if i have a pirate base here and i fight pirates here and get the bounty can i now sell their corpses to their own faction hmm? Maybe interesting. Ah, uh, dragon fire, torpedo nerf, medium, fire delay to 10 from 5. Hmm. And dragon fire pot, large, fire delay increased to 15, but from 14, so it is not a big nerf. More changes and bug fixing. And now the February 3rd patch. Modding. And finally, buff kicksing. Some misalignment fixes. And if some of you were exploiting the game, now the infinite critics exploit from selling and buying on black market will no longer work.
And the last hotfix, at least for me, February the 8th. This is a pretty hefty one. A warning dialogue will come up if you're gonna fight a faction and it will make you hostile towards them. Reduced industry disruption duration from mercenary raids. That's a lot. Some nerfs to the try take and reality crisis. I have never seen this one, so I'm super looking forward to seeing this actually in game. And more changes to the stuff I haven't seen, so I have to play it first. Now the ship AI will be improved for an escorting your own fleet. Better target selection, very nice. For homeworlds, buff to neural interference. OP cost will be reduced from 25 to 15, big change. And neural integrator, remember to 20%? Now it will be to 10%. Yeah, remember this one? Alex really wants to use us the mod. And of course, we couldn't go without some more boof kicksing. But you know what? While you read it, I should download the game and start playing it because damn, that's a lot of things. And as I haven't played through the previous patch yet that much, we have a lot of stuff to explore. But come on, can you update the console commands, please? I need it. Maybe I will have to change some file names. Good work. And maybe subscribe if you want to see me play through this patch. Of course, next video. Take care.